Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify, we're on Amazon, we're on YouTube. Type in PolPolitik and listen to my interviews since 2008. One, two, one, two, and place to be with Tata Mommy. How you doing? I'm doing great, feeling good, blessed and highly favored. How you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm better now. All right. So Smoke. Yeah, you can smoke. We do all that over here. We get right. Nice. <laughs> so I was just trying to um, learn more about you. I heard a couple of your songs, so I'm just trying to learn more about your background. So uh, where are you from? Well, I'm from Toledo, Ohio, so the 419, shout out. Yeah, um, I lived in North Carolina for uh, probably like six years, lived in L.A. for a couple of years, and now I'm in Phoenix. Okay. Then what was your, what's your earliest memories of hip hop? My earliest memories of hip hop? I remember writing my little hip hop songs when I was like six years old, writing them for my, uh, all my sisters and my cousins and we called ourselves like Kid Edition. So I feel like it was more like crisscross type vibe with my music back then. Yeah, and I, I see a lot of like out like your music and like your visuals. I just see a lot of personality. So how would you describe your your sound to people? How would I describe my sounds? Yes, I feel like I'm very versatile. Like my voice is very unique because I can't really say that there's a lot of people that I sound like. So. Um, if I was to say I would sound like anyone, it would probably be more like left eye. I get that a lot. But mm. I just, I think my voice is hella crazy because I can do a lot of different things with it, like uh, singing wise, rapping wise. And the more I learn about my voice, like it's, it's just becoming dangerous. Mm. Now, who are some of your influences in the music? Uh, some of my influences uh, probably would have to be uh, Eminem, Lil Wayne. That's what I grew up on. Definitely when I was in high school, I was a Wayne baby. Yeah, you actually, uh, it was like that one song, I want to say it was called Smell Like Money. It was reminding me, I was like, she sounded like Wayne on this song a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was listening to it. I did, back, in, back when I was in high school, yeah, I did a lot of Wayne samples back then. Hmm. So uh, what would you say your story is as an artist? Like, what do you... Where you coming from and what you talk about in your music? Uh, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? I was saying, what would you say your story is, like as an artist? Like, wh where are you coming from and what do you try to talk about in your music? Um, well, uh, I definitely tell a lot of different stories, but one of my recent songs I did was Kaepernick. And, you know, with everything that's happening right now in the world, um, I went to the protest. I went to L.A. to go to the protest because that's where I had recently lived. So I went to L.A. to go protest with my friends. And right before I, I went there, like, after hearing everything that happened, I wrote this song. I recorded it, and then uh, I wrote Kaepernick. I recorded it, and when we went to the protest, we were just, like, we were recording everything. Uh, one of my friends was pretty much like the videographer, so we were recording everything, and we just turned it into a video for Kaepernick. And it, it's pretty much just like, at this point, we we kind of have to we have to stand up for ourselves. Like this is the time where where we show them like who we are. We're not taking we're not taking the racism. We're not taking anything of that sort. We we know our worth. We know our value. And I just think like the new generation is definitely gonna. Um, Put that out there and definitely going to take our control back and all our power back why you call it kaepernick because kaepernick made a stance and when kaepernick made that stance a lot of people didn't stand with them i mean there were a lot of people who did but the the people who didn't stand with them like now they're kind of like they see what the outcome was so he he's like he knew and he took that stance and i feel like i'm gonna like i'm one of those people that i take that stance i stand for everything that like I stand for black, like I stand for female empowerment, like everything I stand for, there's nothing that's gonna keep me silenced. So I yeah, feel I like Kaepernick will definitely influence to this song. I saw one part of it, you said, you were saying like pull your pants up and stand up or something like that. 
Yeah. Who are you talking to when you said pull your pants up? I mean, pretty much like, I, you know, me, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but I feel like the, there's a lot of kids that are going around that are still sagging their pants all the way down to their ankles. And just like, to me, that's disrespect to our culture at this point, because I just think that we, we, we stand for a lot and that's not one of the things. Yeah, I just don't like that shit either because I just be looking at it like, that's what I was thinking you was talking about, but I was just like, it's not like, like you kind of right how it's going on right now. You got to be ready for some shit to go down. You can't fight like that. You can't fight with your pants all the way on your ass. So it's like, you are a disadvantage walking around like that. <laughs> like your ass, like your pants all tight and the belt tight. You can't, and you got flip flops on. It's like, you finna get your ass whooped. <laughs> so. It's like, pay attention, pay attention. All right. So I would say, uh, so so what, what are you working on right now? What are some of your current projects? Well, I am dropping a baby making season on December 3rd. So make sure you're watching out for that. It's uh, one of my EPs, one of the first of the four EPs I'm going to put out. It'll be different season EPs. So this first one is baby making season. Why is it baby making season? I mean, you know, this is just that that baby making season, you know, so all the slow jams, everyone's like, it's December, everyone's cold, they they up, laid up with other people, we headed into baby making season. So you be singing too? You know, I sing a little bit, you're gonna, you're gonna listen to the EP, you're gonna hear a little something. All right. <laughs> yeah, because the ones I heard so far, I think you just mostly rapping. I ain't hear no singing ones. Yeah, this is going to be something completely different. All right. So speaking of that, how do you come out with your, uh, describe your creative process when you're making music? When I'm making music, I mean, honestly, I like I live alone. So I'll just go home and I'll just go into my bathroom. It's very weird. And I just feel like my bathroom is my safe place. And I just turn the lights off of the whole house, close my bathroom door and just vibe out, pretty much get high and just write. That's why I come up with my best songs, best material. Hmm. And then what do you say? What are your uh, goals for your career? Um, My goals for my career is to eventually, like, own my own label. Hmm. That's what I always wanted to do. So, and, you know, be the next Remy. Remy? Remy Ma. Yeah, she owns her own label. Okay. I didn't even know that. What's the name of it? Uh, I was just reading about it. I'm not sure of the name, but she it says she's the first woman to own her own label. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Well, no, uh, I don't. I don't know about that because I think I know Queen Latifah had Flavor Unit back in the day. Yeah, so I remember Queen Latifah had Flavor Unit. So I don't know. Some of these people that be writing them articles don't be knowing their hip hop all the way. But I know. I, I know. Back. Yeah, I know Queen Latifah had Flavor Unit. So. I know they ain't before Flavor Unit. <laughs> yeah, because Flavor Unit was like, it had Naughty by Nature on it too, I think. But I think she, I think that was her label. I want to say so. I'll find out and let you know for sure, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would say, uh, so what, do you, what are some of your interests outside of music? Uh, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, I was saying, what, what are your interests outside of music? Outside of music, um, outside of music, pretty much I do a lot of music, uh, a lot of musical activities. I would say I am a, a massage therapist, so I'm definitely into like the more spiritual, the more spiritual things, definitely with the stones. And uh, when my smell like money video drops, you're going to see like the money bath that I do. I'm into spiritual things of that, praying to your ancestors. You said money baths. Yeah. You ever heard of a money bath? Uh-uh. What is it? I was trying to show you something right quick. But what is it? So, so a money bath is pretty much uh, around, like, new moon energy, full moon energy. Like, when you're manifesting, you can manifest in a money bath. So you pretty much, like, uh, you get different things that are, like, for prosperity, 
like cinnamon, chamomile tea. Um, there's a lot of different things. Orange, orange peelings, um, different essential oils, all the way down to different stones. Yeah, and then it's like manifest the money. It's called a money bath. And you got to take a bath in it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't know about that. I was going to show you this, though. Nice. Yeah, you definitely got to have those. I know a little bit. That ancestor little bit. money. Yeah, I know a little bit. No, I like the essential oils, too. I'm a big fan of essential oils. I like always like that going around in the house. Yeah, me too. And then also on my website, I'm making my own money bath, so you can buy the whole money bath if you go to my website. So, how, much, how much you? How much you? How much they cost? Uh, I'm not sure what we're, what we're setting the price for yet. Right now, we're we're doing the different sizes. How we're gonna do it? If we're gonna do it for one per order, or if we're gonna do it like you can have some that'll last. Yeah, I'm saying don't be taxing though. Like, should be maybe try to charge three hundred dollars. You be like, God damn. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're gonna try to keep it at a reasonable price. Yeah, but when yeah. I just went and bought everything for my money bath, it literally cost me two hundred dollars, and that's for me going to the store to buy everything, like yeah. just specifically for myself. Did you go to Costco? Y'all got Costco out there? Uh, yeah, you gotta go. To uh, Costco. I think, but but you have to go. You have to go to the stores like uh, my friend owns a store called Queenish, the Skull Shop. And you go to there. That's where you get all your stones. You know, like your ancestor money. You can't buy that stuff at Costco. So do you have a uh, like daily like like spiritual rituals you do? I mean, I just in the morning I'm always uh praying that, you know, making sure that I'm grateful. Thank you for blessing me, you know, grateful to be alive, that type of thing, manifesting for the rest of my day. That's just like the morning ritual. That's cool though. That's cool. That's cool. So what do you what, what how you feel about like the current state of the world? You know the corona, you know about to have a new president. How's everything going? Um, right now I feel like a lot of people said that COVID was like the worst thing that ever happened. This was the worst year, but in my opinion, this is the best year that's ever happened to me. Like I, I just feel like if you took if you took what you had and you and you just made it work. There's no way it could have been a bad year. And honestly, I just, yeah, so a lot of people said that COVID um, was the worst year of their life, but I feel like it was just, it's been the best year. So I pretty much, I took everything with my music. I've literally had the time to sit down and, and strategize and go along, put everything together in a nice little path that I can take. And I'm I'm pretty... I'm pretty positive that I'm going to be extremely successful in everything I've actually had the time to sit down and uh, and put together. Yeah, I see you have a podcast. Yeah, so I have a podcast also. It's called uh, The Rap Show, Raw and Pretty. And we pretty much, we air every Friday at 6 p.m. That's on um, Mountain Time. So in Arizona, the uh, podcast is based out of Icon Radio. So yeah. So what's what's it's, it about? It's pretty lit. What y'all be it's, doing? Um, on each episode we have different playlists. Uh, we just did a Kanye episode that dropped, and then we also uh, we also do episodes like we have Twerk or Naw, where different artists can put their best single up, and we'll go we go to the strip club, and if the girls is twerking to it, you know you that's how you know it's a hit, and if they like cut it, it's not. It's, it's not a hit at all. So we do that. We have uh, Hot Box the Whip. Well, we'll take uh, we'll take new um, albums that are just released, and we'll just sit inside a car and pretty much just uh, smoke and go review the the album. But we are sponsored by True Med, so True Med sends us all their products while we're doing this, pretty much. So you know, a little couple episodes like that that we go with. What's up? Now, what what advice would you give to uh, new artists as far as um, building their name, building their career? I mean, to new artists, I'm just like, continue to grow, continue to network. Everything is pretty much networking. So touch hands with the people that you that you feel are the greatest and definitely go off a vibe because there's a lot of people that uh, aren't 
that aren't really for you, even though they, they may try to make it seem that way. So I'm like, definitely don't give up on your dream because the only people that don't make it are the people that give up. Mm. What would you like to say to your fans and supporters? I would like to say thank you so much. Uh, all my fans, all my supporters, I definitely wouldn't be here without you guys. It's been a blessing. Thank you for letting me entertain you. I want to say thanks for coming through politicking with me. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Um, what's your social media and everything again? Uh, so you can find me on IG at itz.tata.mami. So it's dot tata dot mommy. You can find me on Twitter, YouTube at it's tata mommy, and the it's is itz also. Um, yeah, Facebook, same thing. It's tata mommy. And what what is your meaning behind your name? Well, uh, I've always been called Tata ever since I was little. And it just, uh, there was this one Puerto Rican guy who was my friend. He'd always be like, hey, Tata Mommy, it's Tata Mommy. And then all my friends just started calling me Tata Mommy. So. Uh, you got any shout outs? I like to shout out to Ellis Records. Uh, shout out to RTU. Uh, shout out to all my friends, all my family that's been supporting me. I appreciate you guys. And thank you so much for having me on here. Yeah, no doubt.